her father said uh, there's something called cost accounting go and start studying something don't waste your time that was my transformational point now you've been a distinguished member of the institute of internal auditors time we talk about how uh, you know technology and auditing met using technology in accounting auditing is a low hanging fruit and low risk more than technology i can see or the smile and enthusiasm on your face when you <laughs> spoke about the ca students no, 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 no. sir no, whatever i am today is because of those children. walk in the class when i teach and i see the small small children <laughs> it, it's such a great joy this it, is the rapid fire segment so when i interacted with you before i came to know you have not attempted this before are you ready for the first question yeah okay. do you have a choice <laughs> no <laughs> do you subscribe to the concept of work life balance yeah answer is yes but uh, am i following it the answer is no okay but do i wish to follow it the answer is <laughs> Yes. Are accountants facing the need to redefine their roles? Has it become important for chartered accountants to learn data analytics in the new digital era? Or perhaps more intriguingly, how has technology revolutionized the once traditional accounting and auditing processes? We promise to serve up all the answers that you've been craving for in this Coffee with CA episode. We have the pleasure of welcoming CA MP Vijay Kumar, Executive Director and Group CFO at SIFI. He is a true jack of all trades or should we say boats? His extensive and varied resume is like a buffet of flavors offering a taste of his diverse expertise. From his notable role as the chairman of the Accounting Standards Board, Digital Accounting and Assurance Board and a council member of the ICI and member of National Financial Reporting Authority, he has truly effortlessly glided through the intricate world of accounting and finance. Currently, he also holds the prestigious position of the director on the board of multiple esteemed organizations. He's an active member of the IFRS and is loved by CA students across the nation. Thank you for joining us, sir. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on our show. Thank you, Harshini, for the invite and thanks also to Team Zoho for the opportunity to interact with you. Thank you, sir. While I was introducing you, uh, this is the first question that came in my mind. How do you juggle such a plethora of roles and responsibilities to even have a concept of rest in your life? Uh, I mean, you would have moments like sometimes you might get overdriven, the brain would be overdriven or you might get a little saturated or overworked. So what is your source of energy and how do you manage everything? I think the source of energy is very simple. It's actually my love for the job. So I actually have a passion for uh, building good governance practices. In fact, I should give the credit to my first employer, Sundaram Finance, where I was enamored about the governance practices, the systems and processes. So that uh, gave a very lasting impression on me. And since then, uh, I've looked at every opportunity which comes across where I have the opportunity to contribute towards uh, building better governance practices. So it's just the love for the subject which helps me to manage all of the roles which are there. What sparked your desire to become a CA? Was it uh, uh, a decision that was fueled by passion or was it a delightful twist of destiny? I think in hindsight, it's a delightful twist of destiny. Uh, when I did my 12th standard in Vishakhapatnam, I was not aware about uh, anything called chartered accountancy. So like most of us in uh, the late 80s, the choice was either engineering or medicine. That was the only thing all of us knew about. Correct. And uh, I couldn't uh, make it into engineering, at least uh, within the government colleges. And uh, I had to choose something beyond. So I happened to pick up uh, BCom in one of the local colleges and I used to be pretty playful and I used to enjoy cricket a lot those days. Let me take this opportunity to probably acknowledge uh, a person who made this transformation for me. So one of the evenings I was returning after playing, I still remember it, I was returning from the railway stadium playing cricket around 5.30 or so. One of my schoolmate, uh, a student called Jayshree, she herself is a chartered accountant, but she used to be a school topper. Her father, uh, we were from Tanjavur in Vishakhapatnam and they were from Kumbakonam in uh, Vishakhapatnam. So he stopped me on the road and he told me, why are you wasting your time? How long are you going to waste your time? And then he said, uh, there's something called cost accounting. 
So this course is there. I will give you the details of the place. You go and start studying something. Don't waste your time. And uh, that was my, uh, what should I say, transformational point. And uh, I got the opportunity of pursuing cost accounting. Those days, CA, we did not have foundation. So once I finished my ICWA along with BCom, I got to know about CA a little more. I was a little fascinated about auditing as a topic. That's how I moved into CA. But all credit to that one person. And <laughs> I'll never forget that uh, return from the stadium and my cycle ride. That's wonderful. Wonderful yeah, to hear, correct. sir. And uh, uh, one other question that pops in my mind is, uh, you've been a distinguished member of the Institute of Internal Auditors as well. And I think it's time we talk about how, uh, you know, technology and auditing met. So, for example, the, the other day I, were, I stumbled upon a piece of information uh, where uh, there's something called as automated vouching tool, which probably, you know, um, compares the invoices with the list of invoices that are being fed uh, with a general ledger system. And then there's another one called uh, inventory, smart inventory glass. So what they what they normally do is uh, through that inventory glass they uh, infuse cognitive technology in it, and then through webcam it's easy for the auditors to uh, account uh, the number of uh, inventory that is there in a particular business. So these are the things that I have observed specifically in the auditing domain how technology has impacted. So what are your thoughts on um, uh, auditing and technology um, uh, coming together, sir? No, so it, uh, Harshini, uh, any task which is repeatable and any task where you want to bring in consistency always gives an opportunity for deploying technology. So right from the days of automation which started probably in 90s to digitization to now digitalization to use of artificial intelligence, as the technologies keep evolving, the finance professionals across the world have always been uh, very proactive to embrace the technology. And uh, the good thing about uh, applying technology in the finance world, whether it is maintaining books of account, preparing financial statements or auditing is, it's a low hanging fruit. Unlike using technology in, let's say, an airline operation or in some logistics operation. Using technology in accounting, auditing is a low hanging fruit and low risk. So you can easily apply it, easily test it and you can actually validate the results. So that way all organizations and finance professionals have always been open to embracing technology and applying it. So that momentum will continue as long as uh, technologies keep evolving and are supporting at reasonable cost, we will see increased uh, use of technology in the books of account maintenance, preparation and audit. All of them, we will witness that. All right, sir. And uh, what is your take on uh, how technology is transforming accounting as well? Because uh, let's just say right now we have chat GPT that's coming in, uh, yeah. although it's in a very primitive stage, yeah. but in the future we are expecting it to be much more capable in the accounting and finance domain. Yeah. And then uh, today AI assistants are at least able to, you know, if you give, give it a command like send a payment reminder to a so and so client, so it is able to take that up and then uh, perform the task. So uh, how has that, you know, changed the accounting uh, domain per se, sir? In the recent past, in my view, there are two major triggers for technology adoption in accounting to get accelerated. One was GST. In my view, government's initiative towards GST is not just a tax reform. It's actually a huge uh, reform around technology deployment as well. So look at the way the invoices get uploaded where whether it is a sales side or the purchase side, the ability to do the matching of records. In fact, it's still at not got there, but it has that capability. So I think that has been a major trigger. Second is the pandemic forced. The uh, me lower side of the medium entities and smaller entities who are hesitant to deploy technology to embrace technology a little more faster. And now there are so many applications which are available and uh, products like Zoho have matured to such an extent and they're available on a SaaS basis. 
at reasonable cost but that people have come forward to embrace the technology so with accounting what is happening is with all the api driven kind of uh, application development which is there so if receipts are coming into a bank you have apis which are accounting it just flows into your accounting so there's no need for somebody to get the information of receipt then key it in check whether it is done Correct. all of that is gone it's, it's completely api driven similarly with reference to the vendor ecosystem customer ecosystem all of them have applications where uh, they allow those apis to interact with the other applications so that way accounting uh, has been um, what to say qualitatively got much better because you are removing the human element the moment you remove human element you are getting consistency consistency and consequently the quality so that's how the profession is evolving and good signs uh, but on the same note if pe- there are people if they have concerns on whether accountants as a profession will their uh, role shrink will their opportunity shrink the answer is no it will only get uh, much better because the quality of work which they will start doing will be much uh, different from what they are doing now i have seen it in my own career early 90s when we initially had the automation erp data is getting captured on the systems people had lots of concerns about jobs but i have seen over the last 30 years that the quality of jobs have gone up and consequently the per hour realization or the per hour earning of the accountants has only increased substantially uh, with the technology evolving sir uh, how should uh, uh, accountants start you know charging the clients because clients have a feeling that everything is done through uh, technology you don't have to go to the bank today to sit and you know get a chalan yeah. and then load it on the software so a lot of things have been done uh, via technology and clients are somewhere feeling like the role of chartered accountants compared to previous uh, you know before the technological advancement and now has decreased somewhere and that somewhere affecting the pricing as well uh, when they are when they are giving quotations as well so how should accountants deal with this situation no, there are two things sarshini in this context the ability of an accountant to understand the technology for example the way the controls are built in a zoho books versus the way it's built in oracle or in tally they are all quite different so as an accountant you need to understand the controls which exist in a zoho application only then you will be able to do that kind of a audit so that skill set will be a high priced uh, skill set so that's one uh, part of it the second is many of the accountants will now be able to offer uh, the cio kind of a services mm-hmm. if you look at all businesses what are they trying to do particularly small medium business they are trying to automate the workflows get the workflows better and all so chartered accountants will start playing a role around helping organizations to get their workflows automated choose the right kind of tools migrate between the tools like for example on day 1 i might uh, feel for my volume of business i look at a particular uh, saas product but as the volume scales 5 years later i need to move to another saas product so the chartered accountants will start be able to position to add value around that particular uh, journey because a chartered accountant's ability to understand the business and how the transactions flow is undeniable uh, you rightly mentioned about uh, chartered accountants uh, playing a role of building tech stack for a particular uh, clients uh, or, or for businesses sir. and in uh, uh, along with the uh, streamlining the financial processes as well i personally feel like the way clients or small businesses are seeing chartered accountant is very similar to a way a big corporate is seeing a cfo now they want chartered accountants to have analytical abilities also Correct. help them with risk, risk mitigation Correct. or uh, probably like a uh, financial plan Correct. forecasting and uh, analyzing profitability Correct. so that way they have a lot of uh, more expectations from Correct. the chartered accountants because uh, they somewhere trust them with the financial uh, exactly. uh, reports and everything so they also want their expert opinion on it so how has it become important for chartered accountants not only specialize uh, technology in auditing and accounting but also in analytics sir see actually uh, over the last decade in particular uh, many young chartered accountants even established firms have built uh, what is called as a virtual cfo services uh, which is targeted largely at the small medium uh, enterprises 
and for these enterprises the chartered accountants have actually been rendering exactly the kind of services which you articulated uh, now and uh, two things there one is insights based on what has happened so the ability to give quality inputs on uh, how the journey has been where it's gone wrong etc but more importantly the ability to give some uh, predictive insights as to based on this particular trend how is it likely to be three months down the line how is it likely to be a year from now so i think that kind of a qualitative inputs the chartered accountants have been able to give we need to recognize that uh, e even before this level of automation took place the chartered accountants who are trusted advisors of the businessmen or large corporates the cfos they always had that uh, knowledge experience and articulation capability of how the business is performing and how the outlook is now with this level of automation which gives you more objective data on the table the quality of advice a chartered accountant whether in practice or in industry as cfo their ability to give will only stand much more enhanced all right so your uh, bond with ca students is something special mm -hmm. because uh, i'll tell you why uh, there's a little story behind the scenes that okay. i want to share with you okay. so i was talking to one of my colleague uh, at zoho and i was telling her that i'm going to interview cmp vijay kumar she was in the process of uh, becoming a ca so she was very excited she was like oh my god is it uh, are you really going to uh, interview him so i was like uh, why is there uh, this much excitement what is uh, uh, special about uh, cmp vijay kumar she was like any difficult concept you have to just go sit in the institute where he is teaching and then that will be like a piece of cake for you the next time it's it <laughs> so and uh, <laughs> say that. and uh, uh, and that intrigued me to learn more about you uh, in specifically with your association with ca students and i see your linkedin profile any time you see a, see your student performing excellently well you take the time out to repost and also you know share a small note of congratulations to them i see um, in addition to your professional career the passion that you have for teaching comes out really well so and what is your take on that uh, two things one is uh, i've always liked the simplicity i've always liked simplicity in fact even this campus when i came in i like the simplicity of the campus i don't like things which look very glossy okay or complex i, I don't like it. okay so anything when i try to put it in simple words i enjoy it so that's uh, one reason but the second and main reason is uh, the credit for my love for teaching or association with students actually goes to the students themselves in fact i am what i am only because of the students uh, but for them i don't think i would have traveled uh, so much in my journey or uh, earned this kind of uh, joy and happiness uh, these students were all typically in the age group of 19 to 22 actually and uh, what i liked is uh, the kind of energy with which they will come and uh, i'm sure all students are like that but chartered accountant students uh, many of them come from very difficult backgrounds i, I can't even describe to you the kind of uh, backgrounds they come from and the places they come from i had students coming from all over the country and uh, those children despite all the difficulties they had the personal difficulties they had uh, their commitment to learn and uh, their desire to learn was so intense that it actually inspired me or rather it made me feel more responsible i, I don't think uh i would have made a difference to all the 80000 students i taught but i'm sure there at least 2000 3000 students for whom i would have been probably made a difference and that's happiness for me yeah. and those children actually you can actually experience that selfless uh, love and affection I, i don't get that anywhere else in my life any other part of my life i just don't get it i actually walk in the class when i teach and i see those small small children <laughs> it's such a great joy when i stopped teaching it was a very tough day and actually i was thinking of stopping teaching for almost 3 4 years because i i was depriving my family of my time 
used to teach in institutes that are in the city, right? And then yes. people used to travel all the way yeah. just to come and attend your lectures. Yeah. Uh, more than technology, I can see or the smile and enthusiasm yeah. on your face when you <laughs> spoke about the CA students. No, 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 no. No, I, whatever I am today is because of those children. Very nice to hear, sir. Yeah. There will be a lot of CA students who will be watching this sure, video. Sure, sure. And what is that one thing that you want to tell them with the rise of technology? How should they upskill or redefine themselves? Uh, in addition to the, uh, you know, they'll be learning a lot of tax and regulations from the books as well. But in addition to that, how should they uh, uh, get themselves equipped? I would st uh, strongly advocate that they should pursue very good quality articleship. The beauty of Chartered Economy course is that uh, three years of articleship. Uh, even if you have, irrespective of the size of firm you work, if you have two, three clients where there is reasonable business size and some technology development, if you can start using that articleship for learning practical aspects, the child need not look back. The child need not look back. You should never waste your articleship. Articleship is the differentiator in terms of understanding technology, using technology, understanding business, understanding entrepreneurs, understanding how work happens in organizations. If they are able to use those three years productively, they need not look back. That's my only suggestion to students. What is your take on uh, CAs becoming entrepreneurs and building a digital practice? Uh, as far as C is a concern, actually, it's a very, it's a good question. Uh, C is, uh, they get exposed to entrepreneurship much, much earlier than any other professional course. What happens in C is when you do articleship, the firm with which you do articleship, the chartered accountants, partners, they're all entrepreneurs in their own way. They've all chosen that instead of go for a monthly employment, We'll set up our own shop, 500 square feet, 1000 square feet, build a team of 3 people, 10 people, 20 people. So, you actually get exposed to entrepreneurship in the chartered accountant office. At the age of 19, 20 itself, we just see how an entrepreneur is doing. On the digital side, particularly in the fintech space, there because people would like to leverage their understanding of finance, there are chartered accountants who actually uh, bet with their uh, career as entrepreneurs in the fintech uh, space. So it is happening and uh, they are very capable guys. And over time I am sure we will see some good stars coming out of uh, that. Like we had uh, people like let's say Pranay Roy who transformed the uh, media. I am sure uh, in the technology space, digitalization, I am sure we will have few chartered accountants who will come out to be great entrepreneurs and inspire a lot. Thank you so much, sir. So sure. this, uh, with this question, we come to the end oh, of good, a good, particular yeah. segment. Great, that's uh, nice So we can hear. relax a little bit because okay. uh, there are two other fun segments that are waiting for you. Okay. And I had uh, a great time with you talking about technology, how it has shaped, you know, auditing and then accounting and then analytical uh, part as well. And also your insights on CA students. I'm sure many CA students are going to watch and they are going to, uh, you know, imbibe whatever you have told sure. them. Uh, so yeah, are you ready for the next fun sure, segment? Sure, sure. So I'm going to ask you a series of five questions. Okay. This is the rapid fire segment. So when I interacted with you before, I came to know you have not attempted this before. I am yeah. very curious to know how you okay. answer all those questions. Are you ready for the first question? Yeah. Okay. Do you have a choice? <laughs> no. <laughs> Unfortunately, okay. no. But this is going to be fun, sir. At the end of the segment, you're definitely going to tell that it was good. So the first question is, do you subscribe to the concept of work-life balance where you adhere to strict working hours and separate your professional uh, life? Yeah, answer is yes. Okay. And but uh, am I following it? The answer is no. Okay. But do I wish to follow it? The answer <laughs> is yes. And I, if there is one regret in life for me, it's that I have not been able to do my work-life balance well. I have been fully sucked into work. Uh, but if I had an opportunity to restart again, probably I would do it much better. Got it. And between the roles of being a teacher and a CFO, which position do you find the most enjoyable or fulfilling? Of course, teacher. Okay. How do you personally stay ahead of your peers in your professional field? No, I, I don't look at trying to be ahead of someone. Uh, I do, just don't want to be behind someone. So, there are two 
magazines which I mandatorily read every month. One is the Chartered Accountant Journal, other is the Company Secretary Journal. Apart from that, uh, wherever I get opportunity to, even conferences, I don't hesitate to attend as a participant and learn. So, and other important learning for me is uh, interacting with entrepreneurs and travel. So they teach me quite a lot. So you were uh, the council member of uh, ICA during the peak time when GST was launched, right? Okay. <laughs> so what is your one word uh, that uh, describes your experience during the implementation of GST when you were a council member? A sense of achievement. Amazing. Yeah, and I think Institute has done a great job in terms of uh, building capacity. In fact, Institute is not celebrated much. Hmm. Uh, but the truth is GST would not have been a success but for the Institute's huge efforts in capacity building. The kind of work the Institute has done, I have been witness to that. Correct. And I don't think without that Institute effort, the country could have seen GST where it is today. This was our last question and I can't believe that this is your first. You were very candid. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, yeah, we have come to the end of the rapid fire segment. So next segment would be uh, have you ever. So in this mm. segment, uh, what I do is we have three placards. So I'll be showing each of the, uh, we mm. have, we'll have all the three placards placed here. Okay. And then uh, I'll be asking the same set of five questions. Uh, have you ever done this in your life kind of a question. And then you can show me the placards. Uh, uh, one will be the thumb Thumbs up for yes, thumbs down for no, and a smiley without a, a mouth uh, in case if you no would comment. not, yeah, no comment if you would not like to answer that particular question. Okay. So here's the first question for mm -hmm. the have you ever segment. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you had to give up your stance in an argument against a persistent fellow CA? Okay, got yeah. it. Have you ever dealt with clients who asked you to modify financial statements to their advantage? Yes, yeah. No. Okay. Have you ever felt like taking a long break from your work? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we spoke about work-life balance. Yeah. I think that it's well, just... It's there, but I have not done it. I... Okay. Have you ever zoned out in the middle of a board meeting? No. No, okay. I'm actually at my peak, actually. <laughs> okay, so board meetings are the yeah, source of your energy yeah, sometimes. I get excited. Right? All right. And uh, the last question. Have you ever had the desire to interrupt someone who tends to talk excessively during a meeting? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, yes, we okay, are done so with the Happy Ever well, segment thank you, also. <laughs> I enjoyed it. <laughs> thank, thank you, you for so being uh, very honest, sir. Sure. And it was thank wonderful you. to have you on our show. And how did you like your experience here, specifically in Rapid Fire and Have You Ever? <laughs> so, both of them were first experiences. But in these placards, I was a little confused uh, which one I had to lift up. But I think it's a good experience. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. But thanks a lot for hosting me and making me feel comfortable. And thanks to all these young boys also for the good work. Thank you so much, sir. Sure. I had an Thank absolute you. pleasure talking to you. Same here. And uh, we hope to meet you in some other instant where sure. we can talk to you elaborately on technology and other stuff as well. Thank you so much, Thank sir. Thank you, Harshini.